How's it going everybody? I'm Drifty from Driftwood Gaming. In this RPG Maker MV tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can use skills uh, that you store into variables to increase the, the potency of potions or make skills that get increasingly strong as you use them. So to start off, uh, I'm going to recommend a couple plugins that you might want to have just to show the player where their current skill level is currently at without creating another common event for that. So I recommend getting Yanfly's status menu core getting the expansion actor variables <clears throat> with the actor variables plugin you could put in uh, however many variables that you want to show in this case we're going to take a look at variables 61 and 64 and we can see that we're setting these to column 3 so when we look at the status menu we'll be able to see our current skill level with healing and our current skill level with uh, alchemy or, or chemistry bonus is what I'm calling it in here so those two plugins are recommended but not necessarily required. Take a look at this potion. So we've got a, a name, an icon, a description. We're letting pl the player know its base value. We're also saying it's receiving a bonus from healing and chemistry skills. So um, I made an element called healing but I also have a variable called healing. So I'm setting it to the element of healing um, as I recommend you don't use like your divine or your radiant or your holy or your light skill for damage and healing. You want to specify um, one of those for for damage and then a different element for healing that way if you make like a radiant shield or like a anti-darkness armor or something and, and you give a bonus to uh, to those to those uh, parameters uh, those element rates rather then it doesn't affect how much healing they receive all right so here we have uh, our damage formula I'm gonna set the variance to zero just for this example on a potion so we're saying it's going to give 200 HP, we're saying HP recover, but we're going to say plus, and this is how you call a variable in the damage formula. You type a V, and then in brackets you're going to type the number of the variable you want to represent. So for this case 61 is our healing skill. We're going to say our healing skill, skill times 50. Then we're going to say plus our chemistry bonus skill. So this is just a set amount. So it's going to take 200. Uh, at the beginning of the game, I'm setting both of these to 1 by default, just to declare them. Because another thing I want to talk about is when you include uh, variables in your damage formula like this, you need to declare them at the beginning of the game. So, if we set the variance to 0 and no critical hits, using a potion should heal 200 plus 50 plus 1. So it should heal 251 HP every time. Uh, well, actually the first time because we're calling a common event. Now here's how you handle um, leveling it up and, and getting stronger with it. Now the healing skill is going to stay the same unless you level up in a different way. But just take for example, if it just say 200 plus that, then we're going to be increasing this number right here. So we're going to call this common event chemistry level up. Let's take a look at that common event. So in chemistry level up, um, very, very easy event. This, uh, it's just one conditional statement, we'll start at the top, and we're going to set our cap, like how, how high do you want it to be before it stops getting stronger, because you probably want to include some soft caps in there. So we're going to say, if our chemistry bonus is greater than or equal to level 1000, uh, we're going to do an else branch here, then inside here we're going to set that bonus by controlling variables, setting it with the operation to a constant of 1000. So we're saying if for some reason it goes over 1000, put it back to 1000. Now with this setup you could actually just leave this blank and it should work fine. Uh, this is just a fail safe if for some reason somehow in the game the variable gets set above a thousand it'll go back to a thousand. On the else handler here if the chemistry bonus is not over uh, equal or over a thousand then we're going to control variables we're going to add a constant of one to it. So every time you use that potion it calls this common event it sees its it checks its uh, chemistry bonus level and it'll add one to it if it's not at a thousand or higher and that's it doesn't need any trigger or anything very very simple common event and you just need to do uh, insert that common event on the effects right down here of that item so let's test it out and let's see if the first one we use actually restores 251 and then we'll see if the second one actually restores 252 and 253 and 254 etc all right, so in this event, I've got uh, some potions being awarded. <clears throat> we need to get rid of this. Um, and we'll just get into a fight down here and test it out. 
Um, another thing I was telling you about is declaring your variables. Well, what's all that about and how do you do that? Very simple. At the beginning of your game, wherever you start the player, all you have to do is control variable. And for every variable that you're going to use in a damage formula or in some uh, way, you want to declare it at the beginning of the game. So uh, we'll take a look at our healing skill that's in that damage formula somewhere in here. Here it is. So all I'm doing is setting the value of that variable to 1 at the beginning of the game. The same thing with our chemistry bonus. We're just setting it to 1. You could also set it to 0, but you need to make sure that it is set to 0. You actually have to control variables and do this. Uh, at, this is going to be an auto run event. doesn't need any image or anything. And then at the end of it, you're going to do control self switch A. And then create a new event page. On that uh, event page, it's going to be action button with no contents. Self switch A is checked. That means it's going to run one time in the game. And even if we come back to this map, it's never going to run again. That's it. Now, you don't want to use erase event when you do this. Um, because when you do erase event, it's going to remove the event, but then when you come back to the map, it's going to run this page again. So say you've leveled up your chemistry skill, and then you come back to this map, and for some reason, it took away all your levels because you reset them right here. So don't use erase event. <clears throat> use an auto run, and then a control self switch, new page, and then the second page action button, uh, just like that. So that's how you'll declare your variables, and that's how they're going to be set to 1 at the beginning of the game. Let's test it out. <clears throat> so our value should be 200 plus 50 plus 1 with no variance and no critical. So when we use uh, when we use that, was this? Did not mean to go in here. When we actually use the skill, <clears throat> it should heal us for 251 HP for the first time. And the second time, it should heal us for 252. Let's see if it actually does that. 251. Let's see it again. 252. Awesome. And it should keep going up, up to the thousand. 253. 254. And you can see it works just like it's intended to work. I think that's a pretty cool idea. Um, you could also make this a skill that does damage, like a fireball that keeps getting stronger. Uh, maybe start the game with your character with a super powerful spell and then after a certain event, he loses all his spells, but he, he remembers one spell that has lost its strength, but the more you use it, the more strength it gets back. Um, I did that in a previous game in VXAs. Um, so yeah, um, let's look at some other things I've done with this. <clears throat> like, I, like you've seen on this part, you can multiply the variables and treat them just as if they were a regular number. So this is basically saying 400 plus 50 times 50 or 400 plus whatever the variable is here times 50. So this would be 1 by default, and this would be 2. Uh, this would be 1, but it's going to be multiplied uh, by 2, so this is going to give you plus 2 for each level. So if you're using a potion plus 1, then the value has gone up. So the base value has gone up by, by 200 more, but the bigger thing, the bigger effect towards the end game is the multiplication on that variable has gone up as well. So now we've capped it at a level 1000, but this is still going to be multiplied. So in this uh, potion, you can get 400, uh, we'll just say plus 50, and then times 1000, or plus 1000 times 2. So you're going to get 2000 bonus HP for this one. And then this one can get 3000 bonus HP from that. And you can see how you can make different tiers of skills and items uh, and and really increase the variable's value. So we get all the way down to like a Mega Potion plus 3, and we're looking at our variable times 100, right? So this is going to restore, at max level, 1,000 times 100. We're going to get a lot, of, uh, a lot of power right there, 100,000 HP plus 20,000 if you cap your skill. And we've got a little variance in there. I turned off the variance just because I wanted to show you it'll work exactly as intended. Um, I think this is a cool little thing to, to add. You, I've even done the same thing with uh, the MP recover spells or items. And uh, you could, like I said, you could do this with your skills to, to make a... In the early games, uh, uh, early project of this, uh, the early days of this project, uh, I did the same thing, but with multiple variables. So elemental skill... Uh, you can see that the stamina formula looks complex, but it's pretty simple. It's just magic attack power times 2 plus your elemental skill times 10 plus 
your fire skill times 20 minus uh, some your, your target's magical defense. But yeah, you can really go crazy with some damage formulas using variables. Like I said, I recommend using this plugin, um, the status core and the expansion for the status core. Let me show you what that looks like, and I'll go over really quickly how to uh, how to add that to the the parameters. So if we go to our status core and we scroll down to Oh, our variables. Okay, so you can see uh, it'll say whatever you want it to say in the uh, in the parameters uh, of the plugin. I have set it to say skill bonuses, and so you can see that our chemistry uh, chemistry bonus is right here because I had it on the third one, and then I it'll go in the order that it's entered in the parameters. And all you do is put the the per, uh, the number of the variable in the parameter of that plugin. So let's go to that plugin really quickly. Active variables, you will need the status menu core. Um, so you see that I've got global column one, and inside here, I'm putting the, the variables values, uh, or, or the variable location that I want to show. And it will show the exact name of that variable as well. So when you use that variable, you want to name it something that you want it to say. Like so, if it's your your fire power bonus, you don't want to call it just like temp variable seven or something, you know, because it'll say temp variable seven in the status core. You want to rename that variable to fire power bonus or whatever you want it to say, and then it'll show it in order that it appears. You can see that 61 was our healing and 64 was our chemistry, and it showed on column three, so it works just as intended. But yeah, that's going to do it for this quick tutorial on how to uh, make skills that continually level up as they get used and, and items that keep getting stronger as you use them. And I showed you how to put a, a cap on those items. Uh, and it's a very simple process. Yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up. Like, favorite, share, subscribe to the channel if you're new here. I have lots of RPG Maker content. Yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. You're awesome. We'll see you in the next one.